Hi guys, and welcome to Polyphonic Tarot. I'm Prince of Cups 518, and today we're going to be continuing our sword suit tutorials. Uh, today, moving on to the Four of Swords. Uh, this is a card that is traditionally associated with more passivity, um, a, a, a state of calm, a state of relaxation, peace. Um, the card is called truce, so that gives us um, a good deal of information about this card. This card is pretty simple as far as um, mechanics are concerned, unlike some of the previous cards we've talked about in the sword suit uh, in the Supernal Triangle that are a lot more philosophical, uh, kind of heavy. Uh, throughout the sword suit we've been talking about how everything is about the separation of creation, really, and the formation of individual units of personality, really, um, that eventually uh, create chaos and anarchy with each other because they see themselves as being distinctly separate beings. And that this is not necessarily a bad thing, that this is actually uh, sort of a divine choice uh, in order for there to be creation in the first place. This is necessary. This is required. Uh, required reading for the summer. <laughs> Um, so let's speaking of required reading, let's go through our text for today. Uh, the number four Chesed is here manifested in the realm of the intellect. Chesed refers to Jupiter, who rules in Libra in this decanat. Uh, the sum of this idea uh, of these symbols is therefore without opposition. Hence, the card proclaims the idea of authority in the intellectual world. Uh, and he then says that it represents dogma and law and that it represents a refuge from mental chaos chosen in an arbitrary manner. It argues for convention. So this that's very self-explanatory. This is a card that represents government, really, and authority. And any um, group of people or body of people or any organization that basically argues for a specific way of doing things, uh, a specific way of uh, organizing things. Um, it is definitely a card of, organ uh, of imposed upon organization. So this is definitely the card of social mores, of uh, laws, for sure. Um, you know, anything that tells you this is what you should be doing in order to keep the peace, basically. This is the thou shalt not steal thy neighbor's goat card, okay? Uh, and that's basically really all it is. Uh, the, the idea of uh, Jupiter is doubled in this card, so we get this strong sense of authoritarianism, but also kind of paternal, um, paternal taking care of. Uh, there's, a, there's a good sense of that in this card that gives it sort of a sense of protectorship, uh, a desire to maintain and not destroy. Jupiter being very opposite to Mars, which is all about destruction, this is more God the preserver as opposed to God the destroyer. So, uh, so this is much more about maintaining the status quo in order to keep things even keeled, to allow all things to exist um, co-equally. Everything is very much about equality in this card, and this is why uh, the card is represented by, as he says, a St. Andrew's cross. So a cross of equal length, uh, not the usual uh, Tau cross that we see as associated with Jesus, uh, but this is a St. Andrew's cross, which is really just um, an X or a, a square, that sort of thing. And it is associated with the elements, uh, and, and here we have uh, the four of them, uh, and actually if you look carefully on the hilts of the swords, he's uh, free to depicted each sword as being associated with a different element. Um, we've got uh, jagged for fire, I believe. Uh, we've got circles for discs, uh, sort of craziness for swords, and then sort of waves for water, I believe, is what we've got here. Um, and those go around in a circle. So uh, that is worth considering. Uh, so it's a it's a card that deals all about with structures in inherent structures, natural structures. Uh, so uh, and Libra also, of course, gives the idea of law. You know that adds to that idea of law here as well. Um, an organization balancing out of opposites. 
Uh, their points are sheathed in a rather large rose of 49 petals representing social harmony. Here, too, is compromise. So this big rose in the center has 49 petals. That, of course, is 7 times 7, uh, which means lots of Venus. Lots and lots of Venus. Lots of uh, brotherly love. Lots of... Um, What's the word I want? Political correctness. A lot, of, a lot of you know, lovey-dovey, smushy, feel-good stuff. Um, that's kind of what this card is. This is the card of trying to make everyone happy, and we know that that is a pipe dream. We're not ever going to make everyone happy. It's not possible. Uh, and so uh, the whole right side of the tree of life, the whole path of mercy for the sword suit, is really just. Um, not the accurate way of going about it, but nor is the Pillar of Severity with the Five and the Eight of Swords as well. Uh, those aren't the answer either, but this side is all about trying to make everyone happy. And it works sort of well in the Four of Swords. We sort of need the Four of Swords in order for society to work, obviously. Society would not work. Uh, if we did not organize it, obviously, it would be a catastrophe if we were to go backwards like that, obviously. And I think that's why he closes this little passage with... Um, the four static shams go pell-mell into the melting pot. The issue is mere mess, usually signalized by fetid stench, but it has to be done. Uh, and I, I would like to think that that is um, his way of suggesting that this is a necessary part of the descent down the tree of life. It is necessary, and it is also, from my perspective, this is totally necessary for society. I mean, Crowley was a bit of an anarchist, and so it is conceivable that he didn't necessarily mean that society requires this. Um, but I, I do think that we have to have law. <laughs> I think law is pretty required uh, in order to uh, ensure that equality is respected and that each of us has equal opportunity to seek out what it is we're being called to seek out. So as long as law is in place to uh, basically assure that, then law is good. If law is being used in a way to stifle people, as this card sometimes can represent, you know, some, well, it really becomes that with the Seven of Swords, people trying to suffocate an individual uh, and steer them away from something that they feel intuitively. Um, this card is sort of the origin of that sentiment. <clears throat> so this is the card of the policy of appeasement, as it says, um, justification for repose. So it does have uh, some of the elements that are traditionally associated with this card in terms of rest, relaxation. Uh, in the Smith version of this card, it is, of course, the knight sleeping uh, or dead, uh, entombed, depending on your interpretation. Uh, it's usually interpreted as a tomb, uh, as, as a dead knight, sort of seeking repose after battles. Uh, and so this is uh, what Crowley is saying. is very similar to that, um, particularly with what he says about... Um, where is it? the idea, uh, refuge from mental chaos. So coming out of the Three of Swords, this gives us a reprieve. Uh, we have sort of gotten a foretaste of, of death with the Three of Swords, and so now we are sort of taking a reprieve from that. So perhaps that may have something to do with um, Smith's depiction of the sleeping-slash-dead uh, knight, uh, someone who has fought a battle and is taking a break from it in one form or another, temporary, uh, hypothetically. So, uh, so yeah, that's really all this card is getting at here. It's with the Five of Swords that hell starts to break loose, and the sword start, swords really start to disintegrate into real anarchy and chaos the further we go down the tree. The Six of Swords uh, coming up is really... Um, the last positive swords card, the rest of them on the way down are really not positive energies because at that point the weight of separation has become so dense and blinding and so evil. Uh, the, the lower swords are just evil. They're just terrible cards because they are so separated from that original concept of unity and... Um, and really of, of balance and uh, following 
true will and all that. It's more the will becomes too chaotic and catastrophic and destructive uh, the further we go down the suit, the less in tune it is with uh, spirit, you know, or spirituality. So that's really all the four has to say. Uh, if you have anything to add, please leave it in the comments below. Uh, divinatorily, since I, I mean sort of self-explanatory, uh, uh, taking a rest or a break, uh, convention, and rule of law, all those good things. Or sort of good things, depending on your perspective. Uh, so if you have any questions, too, you can leave them in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share this video if you liked it, and uh, we'll keep going with uh, more semi-daily trumps. Uh, I, I, I don't like doing them every day. Uh, I like doing them sort of every now and then, but I'm not changing the name. I like the name. Uh, so we'll keep persevering with daily trumps and uh, adding to the sword suit tutorials. Uh, my summer sale ended yesterday, so sorry if you guys didn't catch up on that. Uh, but you can still uh, request a reading from me uh, by going to my website, link below. And hope you guys had a nice weekend and all that. Um, sort of feeling a little bit better, so hopefully this week will be a little bit more productive. Alright guys, uh, take care, and I hope your Tuesdays are uh, all very good. Alright, bye.